Good morning, guys. Uh, it's kind of disappointing that we uh, are back having to do worship this way, but at, at the same time, it's a blessing that we're still able to worship, that we have a, a means and a mode of communication where we can come together, share God's word, and worship together. So I hope you're able to join us this morning. I hope this recording finds you well. I know that we do have a few uh, pressing prayer requests that uh, you should be able to see or should have heard, gotten word about this week through the email and so forth. If you'll continue to lift those up, I know that would be greatly appreciated by uh, those that have requested that. This morning we're gonna we're gonna preview our next passage in James. I'm not gonna Sorry about that. That was either an earthquake or the tablet falling off of the uh, <laughs> off of the stand we had it on. So now Brandon's holding it. Bear with us. Technical difficulties. But we're doing the best we can. I want to look in James chapter 2. Let's look forward. We're probably going to come back to this passage because there's a lot here. But I want you to look with me today in James chapter 2. Uh, we'll begin in verse 14. So you turn there to James chapter 2 verse 14. And we'll read, read ahead. And then I want to share a couple of thoughts with you in regards to that. And then hopefully when we come together next week, uh, we'll have an opportunity to, to further explore this. Beginning in verse 14, it says, What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works? And by works, faith was made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Now this is tricky and we'll talk about it a little bit more in depth. James is not saying that we can work our way into heaven. James is not saying that we work our way into a relationship with God. What James is saying is that when we have a relationship with Jesus Christ, the works and the fruit of our life should show it. I got to thinking about that whole Abraham example that he gave there. He's, and Abraham had a great faith and a great trust in God. And so when we see the whole Abraham Isaac story play out and, and we see that narrative, we listen to that. And I mean, man, that was a huge Sunday school story for most of us. And the faith that must have taken and we hear that. And I know as a kid thinking, cannot believe that he took his son up there you know with not only the intent but the faithful purpose 
of, of sacrificing his son on that altar. The larger thing is not that he was intending to sacrifice his son, but that he was intending to do as God had told him to do. And as a result of his faith, as a result of the works that his faith produced, in other words, him being obedient and him going, then what happened when they got up there? God provided the sacrifice, and it wasn't his son Isaac. Such a beautiful story about God rewarding faith and God's supply in the midst of faith. But it's not to be overlooked the fact that Abraham's works prefaced all of that. Abraham's faith led him to be obedient. I got to think about that. I said, all right. <clears throat> so how does that work for us today? If one of us was to need heart surgery or brain surgery and somebody walked up to us and said, yeah, I'm a qualified brain surgeon. How many of us would say, okay, if you're a qualified brain surgeon, then go ahead and knock this out for me? <laughs> Not very many of us. See, that's what it's like when somebody says, oh yeah, I have faith in Jesus, but we don't see any fruit of their life. What do we want to see from that brain surgeon that says he's a brain surgeon? We want to see qualifications. We want to see the fact that he's done this procedure before. We want to see that he's been to medical school, that he's been trained, that he's got credentials, if you will, that he's got some experience built up. We want to see that he's done some works in brain surgery. And I believe what James is saying here is, you know what? When we get ready to tell the world that we have faith in Jesus Christ, we shouldn't have to tell them as much as they should be able to see that we have credentials. Just like we expect our surgeons to have credentials. Just like we expect to be able to see that, that surgeon that's going to work on us has experience in that field that they're going to operate with. James says, you know what? People ought to be able to see that we have works in our life that match the faith that we say we have in Jesus. We'll talk about this more, but I wanted to encourage you with that today. I want to encourage you by saying that works don't get us to heaven. But I do believe that works are a great sign that we're headed to heaven. I believe that works according to scripture are a great sign that our faith is real, that our faith is strong, and that our faith is guiding our life. Our faith and our relationship in Jesus Christ is driving our actions, our attitudes, and what we do during the week. Guys, examine your works. Are your works of God or are your works of self? Maybe this week, during the week, we'd be just a little bit more intentional in expressing our faith through words. Or maybe this week, we pay attention. And when we, when we do one of those faithful actions, we say, oh yeah, that's why I do that. And it'll be one of those moments that God rewards you and he blesses you and you get to realize, that's why I do this. That's why, that's why I go to church. That's why I tithe. That's why I study my Bible. That's why I pray. That's why I serve in various capacities. And you'll remember why. And the blessings will be that much more real. God bless you. I love you. We hope to see you soon. Take care.